The Vogue 9076. This is my fourth iteration and it's not going to be my last. So spoiler alert, I do like this pattern. But I wanted to give you a thorough review because I have made a lot of changes to it, which you can see here in the sew along if you are interested in following along with my methods for achieving the end result that I have. It is very different to the original pattern. The envelope, which I have here, says Pullover dress has collar yoke extending into front band, loose fitting bodice, midriff, sleeves with seam opening and button cuffs, and front button and snap skirt closing purchased loops. And it is described as an easy pattern. I would say it's definitely a 1940s and 1970s style of pattern. The 70s did take a lot of inspiration from the 40s. I think depending on the fabric that you choose and the styling that you go for, you could end up with either or, or a very modern dress as well as some of the Gunny Saxoween and Gunny Saxmus dresses have proved. I've had this pattern since 2017 and I first made it up in 2022. I used a wearable muslin fodder fabric and I'm really glad that I did because I realized that I loved the pattern but I wanted to make a bunch of changes to it. So pattern sizing according to the envelope I should be a size 16 for the bust, a size between size 12 and 14 for the waist and a size 20 for the hips. I've made a straight size 12. This has a very full skirt with gathering so the hips are what they term is free. There is a lot of room in the hips so I didn't worry about those too much. I only have the pattern envelope that goes up to the size 14 because I know from previous experience that Vogue builds a lot of wearing or designees into their patterns. I can get away with usually having the smaller size bundle so I have the 6 to 14 here. So I can tell you the measurement on the envelope for the size 14 bust is 36 inches and the finished garment measurement which is printed on pattern piece number 3 is 50 inches so that's 14 inches of wearing ease around the bust. This is meant to be a blousy dress it is described as having a loose fitting bodice so you know 14 inches of ease is maybe not overly excessive but I decided to go for the straight size 12 which was a 48 inch finished bust measurement which gave me 10 inches of ease around the bust and I love how that's come out. I also went for a size 12 for the waist. The pattern says that's for a 26 and a half inch waist. The finished garment measurement for the waist was printed on the front midriff. It said for a size 12 the measurement would be 28 and a half inches. I personally prefer a tighter fit so I decided the straight size 12 would work really well for me. So that measurement gave me one inch of wearing ease which I personally like but you may decide that you want to go for the two inches that the pattern recommends because it is a button up front and buttons can gape if there is even the slightest bit of tension. As I said I bought this pattern in 2017 so this is one of the older Vogue patterns. I mean you know it is what seven years old now? <sighs> that took longer to work out than it should have done. Therefore it only has two finished garment measurements on the back of the envelope one of which is the width of the lower edge great when you need to know how much bias binding to buy to hem your skirt if you're not like me and don't buy 25 meter rolls or if you don't have fabric to make your own and the other is back length from base of neck and again if you want to know how long your dress is going to be because there are two skirt options then that is a useful measurement to have but given that they've printed the bust waist and hip measurement on the top of the envelope you would think and there is room for the same measurements, the finished garment measurements on the envelope. They are on the pattern pieces, but you all know my bugbear with uh, not having enough information on the outside of the envelope. And if you haven't seen the video, I will list it up here in the description down below. It totally does look like the envelope and I'm really pleased about that. As I mentioned, depending on the fabric you choose, we'll kind of give a different look to each dress. I plan on making another one with Cobra Corsage and hot pink piping. I will be doing a tutorial about how I size, make and install the piping and I decided to do that as a separate video because the sew along was already two hours long for this one and the piping probably would have added another 40 minutes. Plus the piping technique can be applied to any dress that you want to highlight yoke pieces or bodice pieces or collar pieces etc etc so it made sense to make it as a standalone video. I tend to prefer when the pattern envelopes only have drawings on them as opposed to uh, made up garments. I like seeing their interpretation of the drawings but I also like seeing the line drawings. I feel that 
if a garment's made up in a fabric that is not necessarily your choice you can totally discount a pattern because of the look that the envelope gives so i was really pleased that they just went for line drawings because i love them and that my dress ended up very much looking like this all four of my dresses have ended up looking like the pattern envelope the instructions so technically this is classed as an easy dress and somebody pointed out because there are quite a few sew alongs out there for this dress that it could be classified as easy because there's no buttonholes to put in and no zipper and i do see that point but i do think that there are quite a lot of fiddly bits not difficult but fiddly bits that if you've never done them before maybe weren't explained super super well i do think that sewing pattern instructions are written in a different language with a lot of assumed knowledge if you are not super super familiar with that language then some things can come across as very confusing that's why i do the sew alongs that i do because more often than not I want to change the construction order or fully line something as I've done with this dress but also so I can translate the instructions into what I think they mean and how I think they want you to put it together. I've had no formal training so I've no idea if I'm right and I've no idea if I am doing things the correct way but I've said many many times on this channel that if you end up with a result that you like you have got there in the correct way. It doesn't matter how long it took you or what method you used if you've got a result that you like and that you want to wear it's a win i absolutely love the style lines of this i like that they've tried to give you a couple of options there are two skirt lengths and two sleeve lengths with different sized cuffs they also have the choice of putting on a little tie at the front neckline i really liked all of that i did not like the finish that they suggest and recommend on the inside of this garment i also really really didn't like the front placket i found that incredibly annoying i made my very first one with that but decided to go down a side zip route next time and I have done for the the next three that I made yes of course that complicated things but the original dress didn't end up with a finish on the inside that I absolutely love and I also thought the way that they wanted you to do the collar was a little bit daft and the lack of continuous lap in the cuffs and the sleeve. I don't love the method that they wanted you to use. I also prefer French seams and you can't do that with the method that what you can but not well with the method that they wanted you to use. I appreciate that a continuous lap again is adding a layer of difficulty but there were a few things that I was not overly fond of in the original pattern and I have changed for the dress that I now have. Definitely have complicated things as I mentioned but it's given me a dress that I love inside and out. I have used predominantly viscose slash rayon for every dress that I've made. I think because of the sheer volume of gathers in the bodice panels, especially at the back, if you used anything that didn't have that much drape, it could end up very, very poofy. You could always take some of those gathers out, some of the volume in the back out if you wanted to, because you wanted to use a slightly heavier weight fabric. But I think one of the beauties of this dress are the gathered panels and the drape that you get from having such dense gathers in those panels. I think cotton lawn would work. Some of the linen chambres or linen viscose mixes could work. They are slightly heavier weight but they would drape beautifully. Cotton voile, something like that. The pattern recommends crepe de chine, matte jersey, lawn, heavy georgette and it's unsuitable for obvious diagonals. And they do also have fabric requirements for with a nap and without a nap if you do decide to go down the route of something having a nap. Or you can use those measurements for a directional print as well. I basically made view C but with view A's cuffs and the pattern recommends that you have three meters of fabric for that. I've squeezed this one out of 2.7 meters of fabric but it was a very tight squeeze. The only reason that worked for me is because this fabric is not directional so I could nest my pattern pieces. The skirt pieces as you will see in the sew along are just wide enough and with the grain line that they have that they can't be cut on the fold so you have to cut them as a single layer. That's another reason I think I managed to squeeze this dress out of this particular length of fabric and some of my other ones is because you are cutting on a single layer so you can be slightly more economical with that cutting method. It just takes longer because you have to cut everything out twice. I 
made a ton. I have added a continuous lap into the sleeve because that is my preferred finish for a buttoned cuff. I don't like having to put the cuff into the underarm seam. I think it sits funnily on your wrist and also as I mentioned I like to French seam everything so that is not the easiest thing to do if you are then having to leave the bottom of a seam open. I have also fully lined this dress. I've gone through a couple of iterations. I made the first one as the pattern suggested. I made the second one with a lined bodice. I made the third one fully lined and I've made this one fully lined and I'm going to continue doing that as I go along because it is a look that I prefer. It does complicate things as I mentioned but I do in the sew along talk you through all of my tips and tricks for putting a lining into this dress. It's not necessary you can finish the dress cleanly on the inside and I did manage to do that with the first one. I just prefer a lining especially for a fabric like this which was basically sheer and had to have lining for modesty's sake but it's just a preference of mine and the majority of the garments that I sew do have a full lining in them. If not full then at least the bodice tends to be lined. I also changed the closure method. I did make the first one with the placket down the center front seam of the skirt and I absolutely hated how it looked when it was done up. It just wasn't my favorite. I managed to French seam it so I managed to finish it nicely on the inside but I just didn't love how that closure method looked. I felt that it could be a little bulky in that area. I got away with it in the first dress because the print that I used was so busy, but not my favorite. I thoroughly dislike side zips, thoroughly dislike them, and I have actively chosen to put side zips into these dresses because I hated that front placket closure method so, so much. What else did I change? I've also changed the construction order, but again, I've put a full lining in so you kind of have to. I mentioned earlier the uh, collar. I thought the way that they want you to put the collar in is unnecessarily complicated. Even if you don't fully line this dress you don't have to put the collar in the way that they wanted you to. You can definitely sandwich it between the outer and the inner yoke and not have to slip stitch that neckline into place. There probably is a very good reason for doing it the way they suggested and I don't know but for me it just seems unnecessary to make you do that step so that I didn't overly like either. Oh, I've also added rouleau loops instead of cord for the button loops for all of my dresses. And that was purely and simply because the very first time I made it, I didn't have any cord in stock. So I made rouleau loops and then just love how they looked. And I did follow along with their length. And again, I show you this in the sew along, but I, yeah, I didn't have cord in stock. So I made, I made do with something that I could make myself and I love how that looks. So I will continue to do that in the future as well. My second dress, I did change the skirt on the dress because I did think it was a little odd that you have gathers in the front skirt over your tummy but you don't have any gathers in the back of the skirt that's completely smooth so I swapped out a different skirt for the second iteration of this dress which I really really like and I think it's a really viable option I am known to do this many many times I'll find a bodice that I love and then I will stick different sleeves and skirts on it dependent on the fabric I have and the type of dress that I'm going for but for this one I have gone back to the original skirt because you can fit it onto a very minimal amount of fabric. I did also lengthen the bodice by an inch. It's an alteration that I have to make to nearly every one of the McCall's Butterick and Vogue patterns that I make because I do have a long torso, 17 inches from the base of my neck to my waist. I am miffed that they didn't have any lengthen and shorten lines on the pattern but they probably would have put them in the midriff section and I don't like the proportions that that gives when I add length in that midriff section. So I have added it just underneath the armholes across the full bodice. And again, I do show you how to do that in the sew along. I've also added two inches of length to the sleeves. I made the original sleeves with an, just an inch added and then went back and added that extra inch in. I personally prefer my sleeves to stay around the wrist kind of like that when I move and when I've done it with the other ones the sleeves were really really riding up going up much further so I have added two inches of length to the sleeve. I also took an inch and a half of length out of the cuff so that the cuff was slightly snugger to my wrist. I can still get my hand in and out of the cuff without having to undo the button loops so it's not too too tight but again it was just that little bit too big for my preference and I'd ended up having to wrap it over quite a lot which is not the, a look that I love. So I I think they are all the changes that I have made to this dress. The biggest one being fully lining it. 
I mean, yes, 100%. I'm planning on making another one and putting piping in it for a tutorial. I can see myself making more of these because it is a dress that doesn't take too, too much fabric. I really like the volume in the skirt and the sleeves and the bodice. I think it's a dress that suits me. So 100% I will make this again. I am making this again and I can see myself making more in the future, especially some of my fabrics that are maybe a little bit darker and I feel like bringing out some of the details details with piping. I have a black grey scale snake print with beautiful pops of saffron yellow in it and I can already imagine this dress in that fabric with yellow piping to match. I think that would look absolutely epic. So 100% I'm going to be making this dress again and yes I would 100% recommend it for other people as well. I've made it two hours so long for this version. There will be the piping version coming out as well. I think it's gorgeous and if you like this style of dress then you should definitely make it. It is challenging and again I have added a whole bunch of layers of difficulty to it by fully lining it and making some of the other changes that I have but I do talk you through all of that in the sew along so fingers crossed I have done it well enough that it's intelligible and followable and if you do decide to make your own version don't forget to use the hashtag Sean made me do it because I absolutely love seeing what you guys make from the sew alongs that I put out. I absolutely adore this dress. My favourite one I have to say is the navy fruity version and if you're interested in a quick behind the scenes snapshot of how that went together there is a whole playlist on my Instagram. I do think that one was my favourite but this is a close second. The first two that I've made mum actually has in her wardrobe because they are much more muted colours and I've had my colours done, I am a spring so I am gravitating and feeling a lot more comfortable in very bright colours. <laughs> Having said the navy is my favourite. Navy is my darkest neutral on my palette but I absolutely love how it looks and I, I, re I do really like this one. I am 100% going to wear this one. I already have two pairs of shoes that go with this one and I'm really looking forward to the emerald green cobra corsage with the hot pink piping. That's going to look epic. Thank you for the Patreon peeps for voting for that one. So yes, 100% would recommend. If I've inspired you to make your very own 9076, you might want to check out the sew along here.